today I want to give you a story. And this is a story of how I quit my job, how I found myself outside into the world, consulting, starting a business uh, from employment. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I quit my job because it was time to quit or if it was a personal decision I made. I think it was nature that really insisted and forced me out. I we are still we are going to establish this in the course of this story if it was me or it was nature because yeah but uh let's get started so after school of course what what do i know now in school i have done this this environment stuff uh, for four years, I have been told of all the challenges the globe is facing by my lecturers. Beautiful, awesome lecturers. They really did their job very well. Nothing about it, nothing to say, but thank you. So, I'm outside here, a graduate uh, in environmental science. Where do you work? What do environmental scientists do? I mean, you're asking the same questions if you're a recent graduate, so don't you worry. I asked myself the same questions too. And I decided, aha, uh -huh, I'm going to work. I'm going to, to go and look for work at NEMA, the National Environment Management Authority, because I thought maybe that is the starting point, because the only place I knew people like me who, are, who have done environment, the only thing they can do is get employed at NEMA. And so I went there and I found the boss and I was like, please give me a chance. Even if it means volunteering without no pay, without no tea, without no nothing, please give me a chance to be in this office. Even if it's just for a month so that I can pick my bearings. And uh, fortunately, I got in. And so in school, we were taught about environmental impact assessments, environmental audits. Madam, I can't remember she was Madam who, but she taught me those two units. And they were kind of interesting, but uh, the theory part was boring. And we did not do the practical part because kind of we rushed, we are rushed through the semester because it was about elections time. So, I don't know how to do an EIA. I've never done an EIA. I don't know who does them, how they do it, how we get clients. What to write in that report so but i know people get money and make money through doing those reports so i wanted to be one of them and so that is why i went to NEMA so that i can be able to understand what to do where to start and it, that was one of the best reasons best decisions i ever made in life i do not regret a single day but so I worked there, I got uh, to know people, I got to, to make connections, I got to meet the experts, both lead experts, associate experts. I met so many people, it was an amazing place. And then I became a student because I felt like, oh, the whole thing that I was taught in school, the whole degree, I felt like it was a scam. Because the moment I got outside here, I felt, I found out I know nothing, I had to start again. So. I'm learning, I'm learning, awesome, beautiful, God bless the officers there. They taught me a lot, everything from uh, how to handle clients, emotional intelligence, like it, I just learned everything about life. It was a very beautiful environment to be in. It was, uh, the officers are young people, they're all the old ones, eh? so they're young, they're telling new things, like, and even like a story, like it's a good place to work. But the reason I went to work there was because I wanted to get exposure and I wanted to get experience so that I can go to come outside here and now look for my own clients and serve them and establish and be an entrepreneur because that is what I've been from the beginning of my life as, as long as I can remember. <coughs> Probably a lie. So the environment was the best place I was at and I was getting something small here and there and uh, yeah. So all that made me comfortable. I got really comfortable. I am now I, I got the confidence. I'm doing a few reports here and there. I am like, I mean, seriously, like I know this thing. So I got comfortable. The office are comfortable. The office is okay. Damn, I forgot what I went there to do initially and was to get experience and exposure. So I overstayed there. I became comfortable. 
Hmm? I felt like I was employed, like I was an officer. And so, damn, I forgot everything. And the moment I forgot what I went there to do, that is when life became miserable for me. The moment I lost direction, the moment I lost that the bigger goal, not looking beyond where I was, that is when life became miserable for me. Remember, I'm not employed permanently. I'm just doing um, casual jobs there, office assistant, doing everything. I, I was everything in that office. So if you don't know this document that I'm going to link up here, the, comment, the link is down in the, in the comment section. If you're able to get this document, it's going to guide you on how to create a portal with Nema and how to do your registrations. I have gotten thousands and thousands of questions on how to register. Please, do, please make sure to download this document so that you can uh, you can be able to go through the process. It is a very very clear project process. I have documented it very well in this document. I have done screenshots in this document. I have done almost everything that you need so that you can be able to, to go through the process seamlessly. I have screenshots and everything that you need. And if still you have questions, if you're not satisfied by these, also make sure to leave them down in the comments. Thanks God to my mom who taught me how to do everything and to be all around. I could do everything in the office and my work was just awesome and perfect. So now I have forgotten what I came here to do. I am at a comfort zone. And uh, you know there is that, you know there is that, there, there, is, uh, there is something inside you that keeps pushing you forward, that keeps trying to call you up, trying to hold you up. What, like I, I call that the divine purpose. So every time you're in conflict, so when I'm there, I'm comfortable, there's always conflict, there's big conflicts inside of me. Some part of me wants me to go out and follow what I had come here to do initially, but some of some part of me is just comfortable, we want to relax and just continue having good times in the office. And so there was constant fight in between me. But of course, what I did is that I let fears hold me back. What happened is now I got comfortable and now after getting comfortable, there's this voice that is keeps reminding me why did you come here? You wanted to get experience and then move out and be your own girl, be your own, you know. But now you're here comfortable and just getting the minimum wages there is to be paid in this world, somebody like you and the jobs you're doing and all like I had gotten a lead expert whom I was working with who was still employed. So I was just I was just I was just there. So fears now started kicking in because now there is this voice that is reminding me what I should be doing with life. And so now I started feeding myself with fear. If I quit, where will I get my job, my rent for next month? And remember I was being given basic salary, like I don't know. There is nothing to save when you have such a salary. There is absolutely nothing you can be able to save from that salary. Forgive the lighting, the sun is going up and down. So there is no thing, there's nothing to say. If like I was living pay to pay, every month to every month, you know what I mean. And in between, for me to be able to survive, I had to hustle outside, like do EIS, do audits when I get them. But uh, so then the question was, if I leave, what will I? Where will I get money to pay rent? Where will I get m money for my son? Remember, my son then is in uh, kindergarten, so. I'm like, where will I get money to feed my son? I am, people are looking up at me in the village. People are looking up at me in the family. What will I do? And so fears started creeping in and they did a big mess inside of me. They really won. And so they were, they are like, I am like, um, yes, I want to quit. Very, very deep inside me. I hate now the job. The job that I used to enjoy and now hate. I hate the job, I hate opening the office, I hate closing the office, I hate the number of hours I'm working there. I started feeling and seeing how much I give. I am a slave of this job and I'm not getting anything from this job. I already got what I needed. Now I'm just staying there and wasting time. But I'm afraid of stepping out because I kind, I'm kind of in this box. I don't know how to get out of this box because one, I don't have enough money. So I'm a slave of this job because at the end of the month, I need the few coins that comes in so that I can be able to pay my small rent and the small upkeep that I was getting. So you get, I hope you can be able to get this. It's, it's a job I hate. It's miserable. I'm not learning anything. I came here to learn. I'm not learning anything. I am just being depressed 
and uh, hating everything and everybody, getting in conflicts with my bosses, with my officers, the ones whom we are good friends now, we are always conflicting. I feel like they are now giving me the whole lot of jobs I should be doing. This, I'm in such a conflicting space. And then now what started, what happened? This is what I don't know if I quit or it is nature. Now the money, what happened so that I can finish, so that I can finally quit, is that the money that I was getting, you now you are an office assistant. So the money, the, the salary you get comes from the, the office operations money. The money that the government sends to the government offices so that they can be able to operate the office. So I was part of the office operation money. And now the government, you know, with the Hulu economy, so now the money is good. The government has not, the office has not received the money it was supposed to receive. And so where do I get my salary? The small, beyond minimum wages that could ever I could ever receive. Where is it coming from? Nowhere. So I said the first month, no salary. I was like, damn, but I survived. But I got food, but I got school fees, but I got fair every day from my house to, to work. My son is eating, is dressing, is everything. The first month went on, I was like, Lakini, <clears throat> maybe it's because I got a job that month. And then next month, two months down, I'm like, I'm surviving. I'm, I, have, I have lived, like nothing has really changed without the second month of pay. That month, I'm like, wait a minute. Three months, I've been able to survive down the, and like. So now I'm counting. The salary for three months, that is the money that I'm going to save. And you know what I'm telling myself? The moment that money comes in, I am quitting. <laughs> the fourth month, no pay. Fifth month, no pay. Then I'm like, ah, uh ah. -uh. That is, if I start again, that is the sixth, half an year. I have survived in this office for half an year without pay. Not half. Five months without pay. I've been able to survive, to pay rent. I've been able to eat. My son is eating and drinking, dressing, schooling, all these things without pay. And in this office, I am tired. I open the office at 8. I close the office at 5. So if I am inside there, I cannot go to leave. There is not official off day. So I'm working Monday to Friday every day. And remember my wages, are, they are paying me for Monday to Friday. Saturday and Sunday, I'm not being paid. So I was like, damn, five months I've been able to work. To, to report to that office every day of the five months, working there, eight to five, no pay, no allowances, nothing. And I've been able to survive. I was like, how about if this time, eight to five, how about if I did it for my own business, for my own consultancy? As I did not know where I was going to get clients when I leave, but then I was like, aha, I need to think now. And that is when now I was like, Hey guys, I think I've really, really been merciful with you. I've been really, really selfless with myself. And I think now it's time we call it a quit. And who is God? Who is God? Just before I quit, I got a client. It was a, a road construction project. So they are the, the Chinese people who are doing the roads. And though this time around, they wanted to do a campsite. A campsite is where they live. And so they came to the office. The guy came to the office and he's like, hey, I feel this like, this is what really now made me feel comfortable to live. So I was like, hey, we, we want to do campsites. We wanted NEMA licenses. Uh, so we were looking for a consultant. And that is why I hopped into the office because I was around to see if maybe I can get somebody who is well conversant or somebody who can really help me with, with the project. And I was like, here I am, here I am, here I am. So now that we're in the office, there's conflict of interest when you're in the same office. So I referred them to, to my lead expert, the guy that I was partnering with. And so, of course, you know, you know, pitching myself, my, I mean, you know. And so we got the job and there were about five campsites. And I was like, no, this is time to quit. And so I think after that, we agreed. Everything was well planned out and it was time now to, to start the job. And that is when I told the office, guys, uh, from next month, I might not be able to report to this office and now because I had actually given them my all it was okay with them and so I think I just decided I was like hey I'll just be passing by you know the office is very busy there is nobody to help there and 
I mean, I felt, for, I was feeling for them, but I forgot about myself. So like I'll be passing by when I'm around maybe for two hours or even an hour and help you here and there and then so I went there for some few days I'll go there in the morning do two three or year hours free volunteering and then I would leave but what I wanted is the connection and the relationship that I had with the with the office I don't want it to spoil I didn't want to spoil my reputation with the office because I know these are the people I'm going to deal with every day after I have quit my job so. That's, that's it. So I just had to leave. I left, but I left because I had a client and had some few jobs and I knew the coins were going to come. So I, I thought maybe I could be able to survive. And then I, because I had worked for five months, I thought that if that money came by, salary for five months would be a good way to push me around for some time. But of course, that was not going to be the story. And uh, that's how I quit my job, actually. So what I took from there, when I look back now, wh what I see is how much fear can enslave somebody. How much fear can destroy life. Like, I, I remember being miserable. I remember hating everything to do with that office. And it took time for me to be able to get over that. Now, after, I, re I see how fear really made me stick to a job that I hated. How fear really made me a slave. Just fear and you know fear of what fear of something that i don't know maybe it not even exists i was able to survive working for them giving them my like do you know how much you do in such an office that is busy and there's a lot of conflict i mean so i think right now what you need is the courage or the faith to take that step i think what you need right now it's it's the it's, it's, it's the faith, it's the belief. Do you believe in yourself enough? Because, of course, it's going to be tough. I mean, life after quitting is just almost, the challenges are the same. But this time now, you're, you're on your own, so there is not that roof that is above above you. Because now, if, if when I was miserable because my salary has not come by, I would be like, oh, Nema is not paying me, this lady, the boss is not really thinking about me and my son and all this. But now, when you're outside here, there is not that person to blame. It's just you. So I think if you're if you're thinking of quitting, I mean that is just me. Get beyond the limiting beliefs that you have in your mind. Get beyond the fear, especially the fear, the fear, the fear, the fear can enslave you. So that is the, my biggest take from this story. Just get beyond your fears. Just know everything is going to be okay. So if you're planning to quit. Have a plan, of course. I did not have a plan. So make a plan of how you're going to quit. And boom, go out. It shall be well. Trust you me, it shall be well. So if you don't know this document that I'm going to link up here, the, comment, the link is down in the, in the comment section. If you're able to get this document, it's going to guide you on how to create a portal with NEMA and how to do your registrations. I have gotten thousands and thousands of questions on how to register. Please do, please make sure to download this document so that you can uh, you can be able to go through the process. It is a very, very clear project process. I have documented it very well in this document. I have done screenshots in this document. I have done almost everything that you need so that you can be able to to go through the process seamlessly i have screenshots and everything that you need and if still you have questions if you're not satisfied by these also make sure to leave them down in the comments